Check the description for the following discount codes. This isn't going to be the easiest thing in the world to sort of show you here from a, a seated position because it's quite floppy um, and it's full of tactile transducers. This is the latest offering from Sim Racing Studio um, by way of sort of tactile feedback. It's, it's a, a step up and on from their earlier shake kit that I reviewed a couple of years ago. And I must say it's a big step up and a big step onwards, even in just the sort of the presentation and the finish and the padding they've used and the, the overall construction. The previous one was more like a cushion, um, you know, with just four tactile transducers in, I think, and it was just a rectangle that you, that you put under your bum and you sat on. And this works in a similar fashion, but it's got six tactile transducers in. And as you can see, this is actually sort of sectioned off into different padded areas, and then your transducers are in different areas as well. So you've got two at the bottom here, which is what would sit under your thighs. I'll put up, in fact, I'll put a picture up on from their website that shows you exactly where they are, because it's a bit easier than me trying to do it here. Let's get that picture up now. Yeah, so you can see there's two um, under your thighs at the front there, front right and front left. Now these are the audio channels. If you're not familiar with the way tactile transducers work, you use a sound card and you know a 5.1 output configuration to send different frequencies of sound which translate to vibration to each of your tactile transducers to give you feedback about um, what's, what's going on with the car in game, the road texture it's going over, curbs, lumps, bumps, you know, big jumps in, in things like dirt rally. And then also you've got effects like engine vibrations, traction loss, wheel spin, things like that. And you can direct them to wherever you want them to go out of your choice of transducers, depending what setup you've got. So here we've got six transducers. Now the way, I'll, I'll put that picture up again, the way they, if I haven't already, I don't know because I'm talking and I'm, I'm not, I'm not editing at the same time, so I don't know when I'm going to put the picture up, but there'll be a picture up and we're going to look at it. So the way they've got it configured out the box is that the front right and left and the rear right and left, you would kind of have feedback from what comes from the wheels and the suspension of your car in game. And then your center and sub channels would be things like engine vibration, something that's a little bit more universal and doesn't have a direction as such. You know, like if you're driving along and your rear left wheel clips a curb or runs over a curb so or rumble strip, in this setup here, your rear left-hand transducer is what would do that vibration, what would replicate that rumble strip that you've driven over. Uh, and I'm a huge fan of tactile transducers. It's the very first thing I would do to any one of my rigs. Once I've got a decent cockpit and a reasonable you know, set of pedals and wheel to use, transducers would be my very next upgrade because they add so much to the way the, the sims or the games feel. I wanna say they make them feel more realistic because in a way they do, because you're feeling what's going on with your vehicle similar to what you would in real life. Obviously a full motion setup does a better job. You can, you know, in real life, if your front left wheel goes in a pothole or hits a curb and the car dips down and then pops you up back up again as you come out, your motion rig can do that. With a tactile transducer setup, you get a, a thump, a vibration, at a chosen frequency and you can tune these frequencies as well in a lot of instances. So that's how it would work and it adds so much to it, you know. And what's good about having multiple transducers dotted all like, you know, in a perfect, this is obviously a plug and play situation here. It's for people that don't want to get individual transducers, drill holes, bolt them on, figure out the wiring, figure out an amplifier and, and configure it all themselves because it's relatively complicated and a fair bit of work if you're not used to that sort of DIY nature. So this is a completely plug and play scenario. There's just a cable that comes out the back here and it has these nicely finished plugs on which plug into your amplifier unit, which is this here. This is made of metal, not plastic. You've got your on and off button at the front there, at the back you've got power, USB-C, and then the sockets where you plug this sort of cushion 
into, and that's what powers your six transducers, sends out the frequencies of sound at whatever chosen amplitude um, you happen to select in the software. There's also another socket on the back in between the power and the USB. Looks like a three and a half mil jack, so maybe that's to, I haven't actually looked what that's for, and I probably should have, but I'm gonna guess it's either an output to run another form of tactile feedback, or maybe it's a, a pass through or something along those lines. I don't see why it would be an input, unless of course it's an input for just running it like audio versus proper tactile, but don't know why you do that. I'm just, I have read the documentation and it didn't, I'm just gonna have a quick glance again because it doesn't say, it didn't say what it was. But anyway, I won't waste your time figuring out that. There is, um, in fact, I might put in the description what it's for. There is a three and a half mil hole there. Um, but with this plug and play set up, obviously you don't need to use it. You just plug this in uh, and then you get your power supply as well. Uh, obviously a USB cable and an appropriate plug, depending what country you're in. And the way it secures to the rig is also super simple. There's just this elasticated um, band at the top here. In fact, I'll put some footage up of it in my rig now. And you just slide it down over your seat into the position you see here in this clip. Now, over my GT Amiga XLRS seat, that was a very snug fit. I was stretching this elastic to the point where I was slightly concerned I might tear it. Uh, it didn't, it was fine. Um, and the XLRS is a big seat, it's the biggest seat GT Amiga do. So it fits over that, it's gonna fit over other ones. You know, it's, it's, it's very elastic -y. And it holds up in place, no problem. Um, as far as comfort goes, because what you're effectively doing here is sitting on six tactile transducers or the back of six speakers, the magnet and the coil, but without the cone. Uh, and you may initially think, oh, it's gonna be a bit uncomfortable. Things will sort of poking in your back and poking under your thighs and stuff. And when you first sit down, the ones that go under your thighs, you do notice straight away. And you're like, oh, I don't know if this is the most comfortable thing in the world. I didn't notice the ones in the backrest section at all. Um, just there was a little bit more padding, just pushed me forward in my seat a touch. That was it. But the leg ones, I was like, oh, hello. I don't know whether this is gonna be particularly comfortable. But after about five or 10 minutes, I don't know whether they sunk a little more into my GT Amiga seat under the weight of my legs or whether the padding, you know, at the bottom of this here just kind of molded a little bit better around them and, and, and my leg perhaps molded a little bit around that. It, it kind of disappears. If you concentrate, you can go, oh yes, I've got something under my legs but it isn't uncomfortable, even if initially you sit down and go, oh dear, I don't think I'm gonna like this. Just give it 10 minutes and you don't really notice they're there anymore from a comfort point of view. You do, of course, notice all the, the details, the road feedback, the texture, the lumps, the bumps, the jumps, the curbs, you know, that, that you're getting from the game telemetry that's being streamed out to this box via the Simracing Studio software. Now, Simracing Studio software is really easy to use. It's what controls my motion system. It's what I've used in the past for other um, tactile stuff. It's a great, easy to use piece of software, and there's some really good guides on their site as well. And the guys at Simracing Studio are great to deal with in my experience. They did send this over to me for free, obviously for review, but I've had stuff from these guys for over two years now. You know, um, you know, I know them reasonably well. They're, they're decent guys with decent products. Now, the question on your lips, of course, is gonna be, all right, Carl, this sounds great. Plug and play, I'm not a DIY guy. This sounds like a nice addition to my rig. How much is it gonna cost? Well, as with everything in the sim racing world, it isn't cheap. It's $429, um, currently it's got like, what's that, $40 off at the moment. And I do have a discount code as well, which will be in the description. Um, someone mentioned in one of my videos the other day, they were trying to buy something from Sim Racing Studio, but it wasn't made by Sim Racing Studio and my discount code didn't work. I think it only works to products made by Sim Racing Studio because they sell, um, things like Doff Reality Motion platforms and stuff. I don't think my code works for that stuff. Um, obviously you can put it in and it either accepts it or it doesn't, so you'll soon know. But it definitely does for their own products, that is the purpose of the code. But yeah, $429, 
uh, before my discount. They do offer interest-free payments. You can spread it over four months. What would that be in pounds? Probably 300 notes plus import duty. So it's still going to be, and then they're going to be shipping. So it's still going to be close to 400 notes as well. But what you're getting for that is a six-channel amplifier and sound card with a nice metal you know, container. And then what I would call a well-built six transducer housed seat insert or or cushion you know it looks uh, I'm, I, I really like the finish of it. it it would blend in well with with most rigs i think but more importantly sim racing studio software works really well with all your favorite sims you know it's what i've used for ages i love tactile transducers prior to having my motion set up which of course can do it all anyway can actually move you instead of having to sort of simulate movement with vibrations. I had four transducers, one replicating each wheel, and then the wheelbase itself had tactile in it, so that was like a fifth one. The only one I didn't have was one under, oh no, I did have one under my seat as well. Yes, I did. So I, I, had, a, I had a full six setup. And obviously, in a perfect world, having them on the corners of your rig one directly under your seat, one directly under your feet, is gonna be better than, than this all-in-one solution because of the way they're gonna be spaced out. But, again, like I said earlier, if you're not a DIY sort of guy and you just wanna buy something that you can literally plug in, and then and there's lots of um, tactile profiles already available, so even if you're not massively into the software side of things and you're not one that likes to tweak or tune there's plenty of profiles out there for each of the common sims that you can just select one of and it will all just work for you you know so um it is literally as plug and play and as easy as you want it to be really if you want to dive into tweaking around with everything then you can that's there for you to do in the software as well but if you don't you can literally just get this slide it over your seat plug the wires in, power it up, USB, you know, choose a profile and away you go and you'll be getting all this additional feedback that you never had before. So it gets a thumbs up from me as a product. The price is entirely going to be down to you guys whether you feel it's good value and whether it's something you want to add to your rig or not. But the product itself gets my, gets my sort of seal of approval, so to speak. It looks to be well made, it feels well made and it works just like it should do. So thank you very much for watching. And as always, take it easy.